स्टडी आई क्यू आई एस अब तैयारी हुई अफोर्डेबल हेलो नमस्कार 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 माय नेम इज पूजा द्विवेदी वेलकम टू माय क्लास द डेली करंट अफेयर्स व्हिच इज वेरी सिग्निफिकेंट फॉर योर यूपीएससी प्रीलिम्स 2024 एग्जामिनेशन नॉट ओनली फ्रॉम द पर्सपेक्टिव ऑफ प्रीलिम्स बट आल्सो फ्रॉम द पर्सपेक्टिव ऑफ मेंस वी आर कवरिंग ऑल द इंपॉर्टेंट न्यूज़ दैट हैज बीन देयर सिंस द पास्ट 24 आवर्स ऑन अ डेली बेसिस सो इफ यू न्यू टू दिस चैनल मेक श्योर यू लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब बिकॉज इट इज गोइंग टू बी इमेंसली इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर योर upcoming examination so you will get of course notification with respect to subscription whatever i teach is also available on my telegram channel this telegram channel is by the name of pooja devedi upsc so pdf and notes do not make notes i just expect you to listen closely whatever i am saying over here other than this pooja devedi is also my instagram channel you have to talk about upsc be my guest okay let's move ahead and talk about the mainly these kind of events and there is also one practice question that is added to it okay so practice question i asked you about the g20 pandemic fund we will solve that those who have answered it correctly i will take your names by the end of this class i would like to inform you that we have launched our p2i batches from today itself that means from 6 pm onwards on a daily basis you can live interact with your teachers if you are a part of this batch the p2i batches are a one stop solution for everything prelims mains interviews everything and a mains residential program is also included here those who qualify upsc 2024 prelims will be called to the study iq campus to prepare for the mains examination free of any elevated charges you just have to ensure that you take admission by using the code pd live if you use this code the cost which is actually 7 70000 will become 29999 only all right let's move forward and talk about the first question which was a practice question the g20 pandemic fund has recently granted which of the following sum to india's department of animal husbandry and dairy this pandemic fund was actually initiated with the help of leadership of indonesia in order to support low and middle income countries from where generally the zoonotic diseases occur and this is the reason why a pandemic fund had to be initiated the secretariat of this pandemic fund is with the world bank you have to remember this because upsc can ask us questions like this only so answer from these many given options will be 25 million dollars significant amount has been given to india so that india can do research with respect to the upcoming zoonotic diseases so india has got this it will bolster the country's animal health system one health strategy we have that means not only health of the humans but also health of the animals is important new kind of variants new kind of sublineages new kind of viruses are emerging in order to study that The pandemic fund is a multi-stakeholder global partnership. Secretariat is by the World Bank and it is governed by the board, which comprises of different representatives. These can be sovereign representatives, sovereign contributors, non-sovereign contributors, civil society, sovereign co-investors. Everyone is included over here. There, it will have a dedicated stream of additional long-term financing, not short-term, not medium-term, but long-term financing to strengthen pandemic prevention. that means first of all we have to prevent any sort of pandemic pandemic preparedness once it comes into being we have to respond very quickly to it and response as well for low and middle income countries next is consider the following we have to match the payload which is being carried by the chandrayaan 3 and what is the purpose of it chased first is chased measure thermal conductivity and temperature lp is langmuir probe langmuir probe measures the seismicity around the landing site we have to know if we are uh, when we are going to the moon we will also have to ensure what is the future possible exploration that we can do from the uh, moon because it is said that the moon surface is 1000 times calmer than the earth so we have to ensure that we know about it elsa is es- going to estimate the plasma density and its variation so let's see how many pairs given above is or are correct once it land the lander uh, vikram lander and the pragyan rover it will conduct certain experiments by the time you are watching this it could be possible that the chandrayaan 3 is lander has already landed so chaste is going to measure thermal conductivity and temperature of course it is important if we have to colonize moon ever not now but ever we have to ensure that the temperature is sustainable so chaste is correct lp langmuir probe is going to estimate the plasma density how is plasma getting created first of all that is also one of the biggest mysteries of the universe and 
what is the potential of future exploration if we do the plasma thing this is for langmuir probe and elsa is going to measure the seismicity if there is any source of seismic activity on the moon so elsa is going to do this only first is correct second and third are interchanged one only will be the correct answer now the descent of the chandrayaan 3's lander will be in four phases first is rough breaking then altitude hold phase then fine breaking and finally terminal descent four phases because chandrayaan 3 is right now moving at a horizontal speed by the time i am uh, recording this class but when it starts moving towards it will start becoming vertical because it has to land vertically and by this time it also has to move for a particular direction particular distance it has to cover at the same time it has to also move in a vertical manner as in not fully but continuously try to become vertical then we have altitude hold phase for about 10 seconds it will use its sensors to calculate if everything is okay with the moon or not surface of the moon is there any sort of crater is there any sort of boulder then fine breaking phase is the phase when it will become permanently or completely vertical and finally we have terminal descent okay terminal descent phase in that also uh, while it keeps on hovering above, above the surface of the moon it will see that is it possible to land here or if there is any sort of boulder it can move ahead for 150 meters as well so this is how it has been designed i have already covered this do watch it lander and rover configuration has been done it was launched from the lvm3 from sdsc shar shri harikota propulsion module carried it for uh, up to a uh, period of time and then it separated the propulsion system and the lander separated and hence the lander is going to or already has landed the propulsion module has spectro polarimeter of habitable planet earth which is by the name of shape propulsion's work was to carry the lander now when we are sending such hugely invested things we cannot just send them for one purpose so we have fitted shape in it shape in the propulsion system remember this okay to study the spectral and polarimetric measurements of earth from the lunar orbit so that we can understand the atmosphere also lander payloads consist of chest that is chandra surface thermophysical experiment to see the temperature of it measure the thermal conductivity and temperature instrument for lunar seismic activity ilsa it is going to measure the seismicity around the landing site not the entire moon but landing site it is enough langmuir probe will estimate the plasma density and the variation and a passive laser retro reflector array it is from nasa it will do the lunar laser ranging studies okay remember this is from nasa moving on rover which is the pragyan rover once the lander lands it will send the rover rover will move and also uh, mark the surface of the moon with our emblem and the emblem of isro as well rover will consist of alpha particle x ray spectrometer and laser induced breakdown spectroscope for deriving the elemental composition in the vicinity of the landing site basically to conduct certain scientific in situ scientific experiments okay moving on consider the following capex led growth technology enabled development green technology digital infrastructure how many of the above factors are a part of road map to india's 5 trillion dollar economy we have to become a 5 trillion dollar economy and the thing is that by the current situation that we are going we can do so by the year 2029 but india is trying to become a 5 trillion dollar economy ahead of that so capex led growth is going to be one of the factors that are going to be very uh, you can say decisive because capex means capital expenditure the more expenditure the government does on infrastructure building it will create employment when it will create employment it will create money in the hands of the people that means it will create demand and for demand we will give a supply for supply we will have investors can be private can be foreign that is why capex led growth is important this is a circle then technology enabled development development should not be in isolation but we have to ensure that technology is also used so that input is equal to inputs cost is lesser than output cost hence we will be able to save a lot also green technology if we are not inclusive of the environment if we are spending just on uh, you can say environmental corroding techniques environmental disaster will happen and lots of money will be lost then we will have to rehabilitate that place that means we will also have to put in a lot of money again so this is a loss for the economy 
that is why green technology and digital infrastructure so that inclusion can happen more and more people can be integrated in one digital portal and hence everybody looks towards digital upliftment so one two three four all will help all four will be the correct answer this was a concept based question even if you have not learned it or read it somewhere just because you use your concept and your intellect you can definitely do this question at the BRICS summit, Prime Minister Modi has said that we will soon become a five trillion dollar economy. And, and right now, United States, China, these are actually dominating the landscape when it comes to huge trillion dollar economies. India is about two point six six trillion dollar. This is the range that we see. The government's roadmap to making India a five trillion dollar economy is having inclusive growth, promoting digital economy, financial technology. Then technology enable development, energy transition and climate action because energy transition is also important. We have to depend on renewable energies now. We cannot spend billions of dollars, millions of dollars on importing energy needs like oil, natural gas, coal. We cannot do that, right? So we have to ensure that we transition to new sorts of energy as well. Relying on virtuous cycle of investment and growth, of course, this is the most important one. Goods and servicing, uh, services tax insolvency and bankruptcy code significant reduction in corporate tax so that they can invest more make in india initiative startup india strategies plis pli is to incentivize manufacturers to manufacture more in india so that it can be exported so this is a step in the right direction these important strategies are step in the right direction for it in the union budget of 2023 2024 substantial increase has been done in capital investment outlay as well for the third year in a row so continuously we are doing it 33 percent to 10 lakh crore which is 3.3 percent of the gdp a capex led growth will attract investment from private sector as well the central government's capital expenditure has also increased earlier it was 2.15 percent of the gdp now it is for 2023 2.7 percent of the gdp 2020 to 2023 the central government has budgeted 13.7 lakh crore rupees for effective capital expenditure for 2023-24 c on the basis of GDP, gross domestic product, that means whatever is being created in a geography or a region of a country or a political boundary of a country within a specified period of time. We just have to concentrate on that. More and more production, less and less loss when it comes to the output, input cost. We have to ensure that we are moving in this direction. Then only we can become a $5 trillion economy. Even the IMF's World Economic Outlook said, that India will become a $5 trillion economy by 2026-27. Also, by 2075, it was predicted that India will become the second largest economy in the world after China. It will surpass USA, Euro area, Japan as well. Moving on, consider the following statements. The Fukushima nuclear power plant is situated north of Tokyo. See, UPSC loves these kind of questions. It is a fan of these kind of map-based questions. You have to ensure that you know such things. The Fukushima accident took place in 2014. The International Atomic Energy Agency is a, in a final report said that the release of water from the Fukushima will cause negligible, keyword here is negligible, impact on the environment and human health. What happens when we read such kind of statements? We become really self-doubting. Have we read this? Have we revised this? What is even this? If you're not reading current affairs properly, you can lose. So make sure whenever important topics occur you read in depth even if you're not possible if it it is not possible for you i'm here because i conduct all the important investigation before i make this particular uh, class for you that is why just ensure that you attend this class on a daily basis in current affairs nobody can defeat you after that how many statements given above is or are correct the fukushima daiichi nuclear power plant is situated to the north of tokyo let's see with the help of this particular map this map shows us that here is Tokyo and here is Fukushima Daiichi, which is to the north of Tokyo. That is definitely correct. And why this is in news? Because from tomorrow onwards, it will start releasing the water that has been stored in numerous tanks that were affected due to the melting of storage facilities of the Fukushima. This happened because of the 2011 earthquake. And it is important to decommission this nuclear power plant. That is why first step in the correct direction will be just to release the water and then clean out the entire area so right now the pacific uh, island countries are divided over it they some want it some do not want it but investigation will be continued 
because on the basis of investigation the impact the short term impacts right now will be seen on the aquatic animals then only it will be decided if it should be carried on forward or not okay secondly we also do not know what are going to be the long term impacts so a problem occurs here we do not know the long term impact of the radioactivity that this water release might cause so that also has to be studied okay so the fukushima daiichi nuclear power plant we are going to talk about that north of tokyo is correct second is incorrect because it should be the uh, earthquake of 2011 all right first is correct second is incorrect third is also correct because yes it has been said by the international atomic energy that right now we are not seeing any sort of damage that could happen negligible it is saying that only it is moving forward with the plan first is correct third is correct second is not correct how many are correct two only will be the correct answer now as i told you already the news let's move forward to this massive earthquake and tsunami it destroyed the fukushima daiichi plant cooling system it caused three of its reactors to melt and contaminate the cooling water and the water is situated in certain tanks 1000 tanks now these tanks they have a capacity right if they are not released further they will start spilling over and causing damage to the other areas all right the international atomic energy agency said that if this process of releasing water is conducted as designed it will cause negligible impact no impact but right now we do not know the long term impacts with respect to section 111 of the proposed bhartiya nyay sanhita 2023 which is going to replace the ipc consider the following statements according to it causing floods and fires will be a terrorist act it proposes a minimum 5 year imprisonment and death sentence as maximum punishment for a terrorist offense so which of the statements given above is or are correct c recently many important revelations have been made with respect to the bhartiya nyay sanhita in which according to section 111 it is also said that whoever causes fire or flood is can also be called a terrorist so it is a terrorist act or terrorist attack so first statement is definitely correct then second is it proposes a minimum here is minimum 5 year of imprisonment and the death sentence as maximum punishment for terrorist offense so both the statements are correct both one and two is the correct answer this is going to be a game changer terrorism as a separate offense has been for the first time become a part of the general law like bhartiya nyay sanhita earlier and still the unlawful activities act of 1967 as a special law that is focused on terrorist activities this is more stringent now section 111 uh, clause 6 sub clause a says terrorist is a person who is going to develop manufacture possess acquire transport supplies or use weapons explosives or releases nuclear radiological or other dangerous substance now other dangerous substance can also mean bioterrorism releasing certain viruses which can create havoc like the covid 19 or causes fire floods or explosion then they can be seen as terrorist this all goes back to 2022 in silchar and assam which was affected by massive floods it claimed more than 120 lives back then the cm said that actually the embankments were breached by certain people near the barak river and under that only certain muslims were arrested okay a criminal case was registered against four uh, and four muslim residents were arrested and on social media it was being touted as flood jihad that means if people were causing flood it was now flood jihad this was all said by social media okay that is why it was called a man made uh, you can say flood and under this only we are seeing this particular new section section 111 proposes a minimum 5 year imprisonment and death sentence of maximum pun and as maximum punishment for terrorist offense so death can sentence can also be given which of the following countries does not share a border with libya Algeria Nigeria Chad Tunisia right now we are seeing that Libya is under a lot of threat and of course a lot of civil war is going on there that is why it is important for us to know about Libya then this is the map of Libya that is going to show us Libya has a border with Tunisia Algeria Niger Chad Sudan and Egypt do you see Nigeria anywhere no the correct answer will be option b nigeria all right moving on shiyan and yuan wang five were recently seen in the news these are 
Chinese spacecraft, Chinese research vessels, Chinese fighter aircraft, Chinese nuclear reactors. Recently, Sri Lanka has said that it is processing the request that has been made by the Chinese to let Shi Yan dock as a research vessel on its port. So, the date has not been finalized yet, but Yuan Wang 5 last year went to dock at Hambantota port, saying that just we are here just to conduct climate research and marine research, nothing uh, of such as, uh, you know, uh, reconnaissance or uh, we are not going to collect intelligence from India. These two are actually research vessels as touted. It is nowhere written that these are military warships, okay? But yes, Yuan Wang 5 has the capability of being a military warship. B is correct. Sri Lanka is currently processing. I've already told you all this. Let's move forward. The Chinese research vessel, Shi Yan 6, is expected to arrive in Sri Lanka for marine research activities in October. It is described as a research or survey vessel. Current draught is reported to be 5.3 meters in length and 17 meters in width, overall 90.6 meters. Yuan Wang 5 is, has arrived last year. It had arrived last year at the Hambantota port and this issue was raised not only by India but by the West as well because importantly Indo-Pacific is a huge part of the current scenario and that is why in order to safeguard that whenever a ship travels in this direction it can collect intelligence from Indian posts. Okay, moving on. This is a practice question for you. Whoever answered it, answers it correctly, I will take your names in the upcoming segment. On which of the following days, the world received its first view of Earth taken by a spacecraft from the vicinity of the moon. That means taking picture of Earth from the vicinity of the moon, from nearness of the moon. 23rd August 1966, same dates, years have been changed. 1965, 67, 68. Answer it correctly and today is 23rd August, Ava Chandrayaan is going to land or has already landed. Let me take the names of those students who have answered the last question correctly. So Vina, uh, Vinayak, hello ma'am, yes hello. Simran has answered it correctly, Ria has answered it correctly, Mandeep, MJ has answered it correctly, Balvinder has answered it correctly, Saurabh, very good, Omkar has answered it correctly, Mansi, Vivek has answered it correctly. No, Vivek, it's 25. Then Prabhat has answered it correctly, Padmashri has answered it correctly, Shambhav, Komal, Priyanka, Priyadarshan, Siddharth, Mana Samnu. Uh, if I am unable to take your name, that means your username is somewhat like that. Abhishek, Umesh, Ananya, Tejas. Very good. Others who have answered it correctly also include Jintu, uh, Shrikant, uh, Vaibhav. Yes. Thank you for answering the last question. Answer this question as well. I will take your names as well. Thank you so much. Study IQ IS. Ab tayari hui affordable.